Welcome to both the microphones. We're right on there. Just pick it up and join me uh, over here. Thank you. So thank you both for being here. Congratulations, uh, Jeff. Um, so uh, I'm sure many many people would like to know. You know, how did you how did you get to know Leonard? Like, where did you meet? And I think Tappan through life was the first time you invested with him, correct? Uh, that is the, the only time, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, our families actually know each other from Cleveland, where I'm from. Um, where Leonard is from, where actual Bill is from, although we never knew each other in Cleveland. Um, so we, our roots go back to the same hometown and our families knew each other. I never met Leonard until only about 10 years ago. And um, I, just, he invited me to a show. I mean, I, I used my family contact to meet him. He invited me to a show. He said, let's have dinner. And, and you know, right away I realized he's got these amazing stories, <laughs> great stories. and. Um, and he's a great storyteller. Um, and, um, you know, as I got to know him more, I just thought someone should do a story about him. And um, I don't think he really took me seriously about this documentary. Um, but like Bob Wankel says, you know, if you don't drive the ship, it'll never happen. And I was just determined to try to make, share this story with, with a bigger audience. So that's kind of how it happened. Well, and, and you've been a producer in the past, but this was your first time directing as well, correct? That is true, um, and it didn't, um, I really feel like more of a producer, um, but as it turned out, the director who was on, who did a lot of the cinematography, Katie Scoggin, uh, a great producer and director all of her own right, was pulled away to do another um, film, which turned out to win an Academy Award. Uh, so I thought I was in pretty good company. So you're responsible um, for her career then? Right. <laughs> uh, I don't want to take responsible for good or bad, but um, but anyway, that's part of how it happened. So, and Bill, you know, working with the Schubert organization, I'm guessing that wasn't necessarily your first time working with Leonard <laughs> Tappan in your life. Uh, I've been working with Schubert for about the last seven years in-house, and before that I was uh, closer, to closer to me, um, a press agent on, uh, for Broadway shows, and so I'd worked on a lot of letter shows. and. About 45 years ago, the first time I met, well, not the first time I met him, but I was with him and a bunch of people at Sardis, and I was just out of college, and my gayness was not quite to the surface yet, uh, and so Leonard leaned across a whole table of people, and he said, when are you and I gonna fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <coughs> never, <laughs> you know? So that's just Leonard. And so one, once you're disarmed by Leonard, and every, everybody is, um, that it's just, uh, he's you know one of a kind. And, and, and truly, I mean, people like Paul Newman, and, and he can just handle all of them. And uh, most of the stories he tells are true. And that's Phil. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's such a big personality. And, and he seems like he can be kind of tough to work with, too, depending. I mean, have, have, did you ever? In the midst of filming, or oh, yeah. of running, or absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he, he he didn't want any. Every time he would speak about money, he wanted you know he didn't want the camera on. That the camera should be off. And I'm like, okay, but I mean that's all he was. He was obsessed with like you know we need to get more money. Where it's not even a big subject, but you know uh, by and large, uh, I learned a lot about a lot more than I've ever knew about the theater myself. Just observing and. Um, Whenever you think your story is so new, unique, it's not. Everybody, it's, there's a battle. I mean, film's a battle. Every, they're big. These things involve so many people. This film, our film that Bill was in, it, it, this involved over 110 people. Um, and I want to thank one of them who's sitting right in the front, Nico Sports, our production manager who's been here from day one, a young man who has stuck it out the whole way. Uh, but, Taking abuse from Leonard, I would add. All of us take abuse from Leonard. Yes. Um, you know, he talks about Elaine Stritch, and he talks about Lauren Bacall, how difficult and blah. You, he's a pain in the ass, Leonard. He, he can be, you know. So, uh, but, they, they, but in a, in a nice way, mostly. But oh, sure, <laughs> sure he's, um, you can tell though. Everybody, everybody just can't help loving Leonard, and, and so that's one of the reasons that he's had such a long run. And also, he he is the perfectly turned out gentleman. He would, he kept Bergdorf men's uh, alive. And when they saw Leonard coming, they knew they were gonna have a great day. 
uh, and he always was just dressed perfectly, uh, and, and that was part of, of the image that was important. It was a generational thing, too, but it, you always knew that, that this is somebody that, that took the care to present well, and, and uh, it mattered. It mattered to him a lot. And even as the director, Michael Wilson, said, you know, Leonard would be there at every single rehearsal, every, uh, it, the, it, you know, from start to finish, unlike a lot of other general managers and producers. I mean, totally dedicated to making sure everything would go right. And, and I think that's a tribute to him. Um, and I think it, it comes through. And Bill, you, you gave us a great story just now, a personal story of yours. But was there anything that we didn't see in the film that He night? never leaned across the uh, and said, do you want to fuck him? Was <laughs> <laughs> there any story that was left out? That well, there were a few left out. I mean, one of my favorites was, I mean, uh, we, my best material went to the cutting room floor. And I'm, I'm not in any way resentful towards Jeff or the director. Uh, but I told Leonard that I'm going to kill at his funeral because I have all the good material left. He do. He, um, he does. Let me look. No, I, I, I said that Leonard denies it, but I had I have proof that he was the lead producer on Our American Cousin at Ford's Theater, <laughs> and he was there that night, and he was the one that said to Mrs. Lincoln, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you like the plan? <laughs> <laughs> That would be Leonard. That would be Leonard. And uh, just, you know, uh, I'm sure some of us Broadway aficionados were trying to do the math in our head of when this was filmed. And look, you know, Tapping Through Life was the end of 2015 and early 2016. Right. And then the end of the film looks like it's probably about last year or so. Uh, that is about right. I mean, it did start somewhere in, somewhere in 2015. It, we, we were trying, originally, we were just going to cover Leonard telling stories. Honestly, um, that whole, him doing Tapping. Was was while we were filming him, and that scene where he pitched me the idea was I didn't I didn't realize we even had the cameras then. I didn't realize we had started filming then. Yeah. So that was a, and it was my reaction. I, I think tap dancing is kind of fun. I thought it was a fun show. It was a fun show. Yeah. And, and the thing is that you get all the context of like Bob Bob Wankel talking about the word of mouth and and going through it with Leonard. You can tell Lynn Wankel, uh, who, who's married to Bob Wankel, uh, loves Leonard. And I really I really thought. She brings a lot to the film. She uh, does, and the thing is, uh, some people have said, well, why didn't you show more of Leonard's personal life? And I think we actually got it. I mean, that one scene that he's in his apartment, he's moving, and he refers to the photographs of his ex-boyfriends. Now, uh, you know, raise your hands. How many of us have like four ex-boyfriends on their dresser today? <laughs> You know who does the shy. Yeah. Who, who does who keeps their exes not not just one but like multiple? Yeah. And you could see how he's romantic in and a it's sense. It's a little melancholy watching that yeah. footage again. Um, you know, uh, and and he, uh, but then you think about it, he had the Secret Service guy for six months. So you know, uh, I don't think that it has too many regrets. Yeah, honestly, I don't. And I think that um, like. You know, I don't know what it would have been like to be gay and out, like you said. I came to, from, we were from Cleveland. I came the same way Bill did. I mean, I, you know, you know you're gay, but I mean, you don't, you don't talk about it. You're not, even if you think it's okay with the group you're with, but Leonard just goes right to the bottom line with it. And, and it is kind of refreshing in a certain way. And, and it's not, um, you know, he saw over in the Me Too movement. I was talking to Michael Doyle, who produced the film that was shown, and you saw a slot of him, a shot of him. But it's always good natured with Leonard, and he is always well dressed, and that's the funniest thing. He's like, you know, put your put your napkin on your, you know, put your, your you know, his 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 directions of manners and how to how I have to put my fork and my knife at the end of my meal, and to, then I do because I learned from him. And but then he talks about, you know, you know, isn't that a cute waiter over there? No, okay, poor waiter from Sardis, this young guy. Um, but the thing also watching it tonight, you can tell it mattered to Leonard that his father was held, his father was not approving. And, and Leonard was, was about as good as you can get winning Tony Awards, you know. Uh, and so that was a gener generational thing too, that as much as out as Leonard was, he was not, you know, in any kind of uh, harmony with his father, and it mattered. Yeah, I think many of us have that sort of person in their life that you're you, you want to get a little more support from in a certain way, and it wasn't going to happen in that respect. And I'm guessing, I'm just one more question, and we'll open it up. Sure. But um, it, you know, I'm guessing he's still plugging away. Leonard is still plugging away. In Where fact, if I can do Where a quick pitch, 
He will be, he has moved again, by the way. He, he didn't live in that studio very long. He now lives in Palm Springs. But if you would like to meet Leonard, he will be, and I can do this because now we've played Newfest, he will be at the, it is playing at the Landmark Theater next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Leonard is coming in from Palm Springs uh, for the Q&A for the first two nights. Tickets are available at LeonardSalvayBroadway.com. And the Wankles uh, will be there. The Schubert, many Schubert people will be there. Um, Actress Fund is, is joining us for that. And if you like this film, all of you can see it on demand and digital on demand beginning in the middle of after November 15th. And I, and I do need to, if you liked it, tell your friends, go online. Uh, I think it's a fun story to, to, to share. And just so you know, Leonard is in uh, Palm Springs where his nephew lives, where his nephew and his partner live. And so they're taking care of him uh, in his 93rd. I think at 91, he realized that, you know, straightening this, running around the streets of New York. He is still working on the fellow travelers, though, and he will come back if they do get a star. And they are still working on that for next spring. So um, who knows? You might get to see him. He is still plugging away. That's great. Any questions? I think we have time for like two questions, two or three. Yeah. Well, to say, I saw a tapping through life twice. I thought it was wonderful. Wow, what is your name? Karen. Karen? And I sent other people to see it. They loved it also. But is it going to Broadway? That's well, tapping through life, I think, is... Off the plate. It's been, it, it has played a lot of regional theaters no, before Leonard bought it. I think it has to be also like shuffle along. I love tap. I, do I too. think it has to be like at the Joyce Theater, Lincoln Center, the usual tourist. They're not, they don't love tap dance yeah. like I do. But I and also age was a factor, not not Leonard, but Maurice Hines is, is pushing his mid seventies, and I think it was tap is more of a younger man's game. But it was great. a great, great it show. It was wonderful, and I see five Broadway shows in one weekend, so I'm allowed <laughs> well, to judge. I appreciate it. We appreciate you saying that. Anyone else? Yeah. 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 So when Leonard moved the first time yeah. to the Hamptons, did you think, okay, well, my movie's done, and then you like started working on it, and then he came out of retirement? Yes, I. that's 100% correct. I thought the movie was done then. And um, so that's why we were in the editing room. Uh, you know, it takes a long to edit anything. It takes a long time. And that's when he said, you know, um, I can't live out here anymore. You know, it's just, it's just, um, that's it. But, and, and actually what got me even more is that 90 years old, he actually put, he really did, as Scott, uh, Campbell Scott, our wonderful narrator, Campbell Scott said, he put his stuff in storage. Now who at 90 takes all their personal belongings, puts them in storage, and moves back to New York? Maybe, you know, a 20 year old goes to New York and lives in the studio, but not necessarily a 90 year old. That's why he's, he's a unique person. You probably that, this audience knows that Campbell Scott is the son of Colin Dewhurst and uh, George C. Scott. Uh, so it was yeah. great that he would, uh, you know, do this. I uh, thought he did it. And a also, I never bought it with letters saying, I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. I never bought it, you know. I right, mean, you asked the question. I was, yeah, throw it. And, but I think that's how things are. They, they take their toll on people, and, but then you think about it, and you want to try it again. Question out there. Yeah. Who's the plan? Tell us what you're doing at the Schubert organization. Well, I, I worked for uh, Schubert as a freelance for lots and lots and lots of their projects over my career. And uh, I, at one day, hit the wall. It was like after 35 years of uh, going to Times Square every single day of my life. I couldn't do it anymore. So I just, I just stopped. I closed up shop. Then, talking over the, the years, I'd always say, well, you know, there's got to be some place at Schubert, you know. And so basically it's a new, uh, newly created uh, position when, when I came. And it's basically, it's a lot of, I, I did a lot of work with Neil Simon and a lot of work with Mike Nichols. And those people like Schubert, their, their requirements aren't about promotion. You know, they're not about, you know, theater uh, openings and, and trying desperately to get publicity. So it's kind of a quality control thing. You know, the river flows and you're trying to, you know, to do, uh, just keep everything on a on a certain level, and and uh, it's been it's really been good. Especially, it's a great gig for somebody at my point in life because I don't have to worry about my own overhead or or uh, you know what shows coming and what isn't coming and what's going to flop and what isn't. But it's a very steady. Thing.
thing. So it's worked out really well. And, and they knew, knew what I was up to and I knew what they wanted. And so it's, it's been great. I'm, I'm very uh, fortunate and very grateful. Great. And I think we have one more time for one more question. Sure. Right back there. Oh, great. It's playing where in New Jersey? New Jersey Packing, Newark. With Maurice? New playing at the New Jersey Pack. Pack. With Maurice and the, and the uh, Manzaris? Yes. Well, there you go. There you go. Go Check Google Maurice Hines and Adam Through Life. It is a great show. Yes. And Jeff, what's next for you? Well, uh, yes. <laughs> I, I, do have an, I do have another story that, um, that's a narrative story that's uh, a different subject, but I'm not ready to um, tout it yet, but they... I was told a long time ago, if you want to keep going, you got to have something else to talk about. So keep keep your eyes out. out. There'll, there'll be something from me. That was great. At some point. <laughs> that was great, Dick. <laughs> well, they don't want to hear about that right now. Let's talk about this film. Well, thank you both so much for being here. And thank you all for watching. Um, and tickets are on LandSalwaysBroadway.com. If you like it, tell your friends, and that would be great. We'd be great to have you. And you can meet Leonard in person. And if you don't want, if you want to meet him anyway, just show up at the bar, and he'll be there beforehand on Monday and Tuesday. Great. Thank you both. Have a great evening. Fest.